Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of The Nuncle Show. As always, Scott Carson, excited to be here with you this morning. And I wanted this episode to be a little bit different. I wanted to talk about realistic expectations. And what I find humorous, and I have to laugh about it, is I see people all the time that come into the note business or they come into real estate and they don't understand their realistic expectations. They don't understand that it takes marketing. It takes time to build a business. It takes time to have deals closed. It takes time to get deals sold. It takes time to literally have a bank send you assets. I see this over and over again. People are like, I sent my first email. Where's the deals? And I'm like, okay, where did you send it to? Is it your first email you sent out? Did you do a follow-up email? Okay, great. You sent your first email, great. 80% of sales happens after the fifth contact. And I always find it humorous when people send out emails, but they then also don't send it to me to review as well. First, especially if you're a student of mine, I would love to review your email so as to make sure you're not shooting yourself in the foot. Now, this is one of the hardest things I think new investors have. They don't realize that it takes time. And we all know it takes time. And I wanted to bring something up. I, I posted something yesterday, not on Facebook, I posted something in our Note Night in America webinar last night that we had, and I want to thank everybody for listening to that. It's on, uh, should be uploaded pretty soon in the next couple of days to iTunes as well. You can always go over to our YouTube channel and watch the replay by just going to, you know, youtube.com slash weclosenotes or catch it at weclosenotes.tv as well. What's, what's funny is people don't realize this. They think they can make 10 phone calls or make 10 offers and they're going to solve everything. And that's not the case. I don't know why we have such a lack of patience in this country, but it's the same thing. You have to realize it takes time. It takes marketing. It takes building this thing and doing and rinsing and repeating, rinsing and repeating, rinsing and repeating. And realistic expectations. Hey, if you send out an email, you're only going to have about a 20% open rate at the best of the emails you send out. And that's to asset managers, that's to private investors, that's to your database. 20% is the pretty nominal open rate. For bankers, it may be a little bit less, like 15% once you combine your first and second round of emails. You know, sending it to your database, if you've got a very short, small database of just warm contacts, it could be 30, 35% maybe. If it's to your like 5,000 or 10,000 LinkedIn connections or others, it's going to be probably somewhere between 10 and 15%. What? is just mind boggling though, as I get emails from people like, I can't find any deals. And I'm like, okay, how often have you been sending stuff out? Are you networking? And people just don't do that. And it, it, the, the lack of patience, I think is understandable because we all have a lack of patience. I mean, God knows I don't like to stand in lines. Nobody likes to sit and wait. We want things to happen now. I think we're very spoiled that way. The thing you have to keep in mind with everything out here is there's a time to it. There's realistic expectations. If you just send your first email out this week and you're following up with phone calls this week, great. You're going to get more from making phone calls than anything else. I mentioned last night on the Note Night in America about the fact that my first time around of calling banks, I didn't have an email list. I was literally dialing for dollars and I made 55 phone calls and got 55 no's before I got my first yes. Now, if calling banks calling asset managers, calling secondary marketing professionals is something you want to add to your, what you're doing and you have the time to do it, great. But let's set some realistic expectations, right? You're probably going to make 50 phone calls. It's a normal afternoon. If you really dive in to call in between 10 and noon and then two and five, the asset manager's time, not your time. That's five hours. You can knock out about 10 phone calls in an hour. That's 50 phone calls. Out of 50 phone calls, now you'll probably talk somewhere between 10 and 20 people. That's an average, probably around 13 to 14, be more pre precise. Out of that, hey, you may get a couple of non-disclosure agreements. It just depends on who you're calling. It depends on the value, the valuable list that you're calling off of. Too. If you're calling off a lane guide, that can vary. If you're calling off a distressed pro and you've done your work, hey, those may be higher valuable contacts because what Brett does, a distressed pro, is identifying some percentages if you've gone through his training. If you're just dialing for dollars off the Texas mortgage bankers list, hey, you don't know what you're, you're gonna get. 
but literally consistency is the game here. And if you're not willing to put in some consistency in this, I'm sorry, probably should go back to doing something else. You know, one of the things that a lot of people teach is if you're mailing out postcards, you have to expect a one to 4% response rate. Well, if you send out postcards, you get a 1% response rate. That means if you send out 100 cards to get one really response, it doesn't mean it's a deal. I know <laughs> from years of experience of doing this between 2002 in 2008, is when I dropped postcards or letters out to bars that were in trouble or foreclosures, I was lucky to get a 1% to 4% response rate. I was lucky that they weren't calling me the week of the foreclosure or the week after the foreclosure auction. And I think people just honestly need to realize, realize that, hey, people aren't going to fall over and give them deals. They're just not going to fall over like, oh, I take my deals. That's not the way this business works. That's not the way real estate works. If you're brand new to real estate, I understand maybe you don't have the patience for it. I get that, hey, this is new to you. But literally everybody, literally, you got to realize that, hey, it's going to take a little bit of time. You've got to put some patience into it. You've got to give your marketing time to work. You have to wait for it to marinate. You have to realize, too, that depending on when you send your email out, it's also going to vary on how effective an email. If you send it out on a Friday afternoon, eh, horrible. If you send it out on a Monday morning, horrible your best time to reach asset managers, and I think I've talked about this before in the podcast, is contacting, you know, sending an email between two, either 11 in the morning or two, three o'clock in the afternoon and sending it on a Tuesday or Thursday and then rotating that. So if you send it originally, the first email on a Tuesday at 11, send it at Thursday at two or three and then flip flop. You first send it on Thursday at two or three, you know, send it at Tuesday at 11. And rotate. And really, guys, if we if we realize that 80% of sales made up for the fifth contact, if you're sending an email out once a week, the follow-up email doesn't count to those. All right. You've got to send an original email out at least five times straight. Now, if you're doing it once a month, okay, that's five months. If you're doing it twice a month, that's two and a half months, really, before you start seeing stuff. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to get some lists along the way. You may get some lists of contract for deeds. You may get some lists of some other one-off stuff. You may have a joker broker, depending on where you're pulling your list from. You may get some people that send you some stuff under consignment. I mean, I bought assets under consignment. What, what's that mean? That means you've got a broker or a fund that they've got a list from a seller that they're selling on behalf. They're kind of brokering that deal for that seller. Now, we, see, we I've seen a lot of portfolios pop up, especially in the last couple of weeks where there's different assets available. Even somebody says that they get the whole tape under contract and I'm laughing I'm like, well, you can't have the full tape under contract because I got 64 of that tape, 64 assets of that tape under contract. You've got to have patience and you have to understand, like I said before, that it just takes a little bit of time to make things happen. You can't be all, oh, it's got to take, it's got to happen right now. It's got to happen right now. And I, I don't know everybody's situation. I know sometimes people are struggling monetarily wise. I had one guy uh, originally signed up for my training um, at the end of the last year. And he called me up like a weekend. Hey, I need to make money now. I'm like, well, no offense. Then you probably need to get a job. If you're trying to get into real estate investing and you need to make money today or the next week or two, you probably need to get a job. I hate to say that, but real estate takes a little bit of time on marketing. This just doesn't matter if you're a wholesaler, you're a fix and flipper, you're a landlord. I mean, wholesaling, you can make some quicker money, but it still takes time for you to develop those lists and to find those deals. That's, that's the thing. You have to put your marketing in place. You got to give it time for that sauce to marinate in across your list. You got to give your database time to realize, oh, hey, you are changing what you're doing. This is why we talk about how the, the importance of emailing out your database and doing it now and consistently. You can't do it once a month. Uh, I had a really great guy come to my office a few months ago. He's like, oh, yeah, I market to my database. I send an email out once a month. I'm like, once a month? You're, you're, you're not, that's too, that's too little because your, your database, your investors, they're forgetting about you. They're not seeing you in front of them on a regular enough basis of once a month, or I'm sorry, once a week at least. It's, I think everybody should be sending an email at least once a week to your database. And last night, if you, we, we outlined some things uh, no, night in America, there's simple things to do. You know, sending out an email, at least if you want to do it twice a month to asset managers, that's great. Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, two weeks later. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. That's a great thing to 
put in place and follow up with on a regular basis. And those that open your email, those are the ones that go into your call list if you're going to be calling. But I would, you know, if, if you're going to make phone calls and this is something that you're serious about doing, you can make 50 phone calls. You can knock 50 phone calls out in a week pretty easy. You do it a couple of days. If you did it one day a month where Wednesday was your hump day, you called the 50 people that open your email on that you sent on Tuesday and you start dialing for dollars on those 50 people, those 50 banks. You would, you figure that if you did that once, that's 200 phone calls in a month. That's not bad. That's a great start. What you don't want to do is be one of these yahoos that makes 10 phone calls, gets 10 no's and then hangs up. Oh, I'm not going to do this again. I've had people reach out to me recently. Oh, I had one bad experience. Okay. One bad experience out of 5,000. That's like literally going out if you're a guy and going in for the first kiss on a girl, she slaps you. I don't know, hopefully you have a better time than that. You know, or dancing, you step on a girl's shoes while you're dancing and you leave. I'm like, oh no, I'm not doing that. You can't be like that. You gotta have a little bit thicker skin. You gotta be willing to stick to it a little bit. So realistic expectations. Hey, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Give yourself some time, build upon what you're putting in place and just get better each week, get better each week. And eventually over time, and it could be soon, it could be later. I don't know what your marketing schedule is. Hopefully it's like I said, email to your asset managers twice a month and email out to your database, your regular database at least once a month, uh, once a week, at least once a week. Those couple of things will breed to you, A, finding deals and then raising capital when you have something available. The reason you want to do this, uh, let's not forget the third thing of posting at least once a day to your social profiles, posting at least once a day, bare minimum to your LinkedIn, your Facebook, you know, bare minimum of posting across the board like that, at least once a day. That's not hard to do. Heck, you can use the same freaking thing and reshare it across by using Buffer or Hootsuite. One marketing piece. You could literally log into dsnews.com or Housing Wire or uh, USA Today Real Estate, whatever. Find something to start sharing to your database. You could share your golden nugget. I like this morning, or was it uh, our buddy Garrison Gilbert posts multifamily Mondays. He posts a tip or solution for multifamily investors to his Facebook profile. It's a great thing. It's targeted directly what he's focused on. You have to realize, everybody, you there's so many ways to do this. But it all comes down to literally, as I said last night, it's all about blocking and tackling the basics. And you got to set realistic expectations. Uh, if you're, <clears throat> if you aren't, what's the best way to say this nice? Well, maybe I shouldn't be nice. If you don't understand this and you don't have experience and you have to look back at what you've been through. If you've constantly gone from one thing to another thing to another thing, and you've never fully implemented one thing, that's the problem. I have people that are, are going through our online training, they're watching the replays, and I can guarantee they're asking questions. Well, I know that they're asking questions because they have, or they haven't watched all the videos. It's a better way of saying it. They haven't watched all the videos because they're asking questions that come in day two, or they come in day three. They're getting way ahead of themselves. Oh, I don't wanna learn the nuts and bolts. I wanna go straight to the assets. I mean, well, no offense, go back and watch the videos. You have to watch our videos and our note buying blueprint or our virtual note buying workshop because they kind of build up on each other. You have to learn real estate expectations. You're just signing sign up for a class. Does it make you a note expert? <laughs> and a lot of people think that oh, I'm going to sign up for a wholesaling class, but I'm actually not going to do any of the work. I'm, I'm just going to be a wholesaler. That's like literally saying I'm going to go to college, but I'm never going to go to class. Now, I, there was plenty of times I went to, I was in college. I didn't go to the classes sometimes. Yeah, it just depends on what's going on. I mean, there are classes I could go that I literally just show up for the tests. I would be fine. Or those that I would just sit through class. I would never read any of the thing. As long as I read, went through class, I was fine. You know, you have to understand it, everybody, that, hey, wake up, America. Wake up, note investors. Your realistic expectations, your expectations are not realistic. And maybe you need to ask somebody. If you think you're going to make money in the first week or you're, somebody just emailed me and said, oh, I'm only seeing like contract for deeds. I'm like, okay. Great. That's a lot of them are going on right now. Are you reaching out to banks? No. <laughs> okay. Then reach out to some banks. Reach out. Reach out and call someone. Reach out and touch someone. I can't help you if you don't have patience. I can't help you if you're not going to follow the, the plan in place that it's so many other note investors have used to go to success. 
And literally, it's not difficult. I said literally a lot. Literally, it's simple as emailing, following up, emailing, following up, emailing, following up, posting social media. media. You have to start changing the way that your tribe starts to see it because we all have a tribe of friends, family, colleagues, peers that surround us that see us in the light, especially if you're working a full-time job. They see you as uh, Steve, the mechanic. They see you as John, the social worker. They see you as uh, Leah, you know, the, uh, the counselor, whatever it may be. That's okay. You, but you have to start sharing, hey, here's a little thing that I'm working on the side hustle. Here's a little thing I do in my spare time. Because everybody's an investor, everybody. I think we can agree to that. Everybody is an investor of some sort, whether A, they're thinking about retirement, or B, they got a 401k at their office they're trying to put together, or C, they're trying to pay for kids' education, or D, they're worried about paying for mom and dad's long-term care, or vice versa. Let's face it, retirement ain't cheap a lot of times, especially if you've, if you've got health issues. It's very expensive. You have to start planning now for the future. So everybody's an investor of some sort. Everybody's looking to get above average return than a certificate of disappointment. You have to get the word out on what you're doing, but the best way to raise capital is to have the deals that you're working through, to have a list of assets that you've gotten from a bank, an asset manager, hedge fund, whatever it may be. Just start marketing. You can go join different lists in LinkedIn and reach out, see what lists there are available. Just realize that there's multiple ways to find deals if you will just do the work, whether you're dialing for dollars, whether you've gone to LinkedIn and just did a search for special assets, secondary marketing managers, whether you are uh, just jumping on Lane Guide, whether you're using Distress Pro, those are the way. Those are the basic ways that you're going to find banks and, and contacts to do that. You could download the Texas Savings and Mortgage Bankers list. You could go to the National MLS. You could start calling servicers to talk to their business development guys. There's just a variety of things that you guys can do and gals can do to find assets, but it's running different plays. It's a running of running. <clears throat> Give me a great example. You didn't see either one of the teams running a fullback dive, fullback dive, fullback dive, every play. They're running a different play in the Super Bowl. They're running a different play in the NBA. They're throwing a different pitch in the major league in, in baseball. The reason they have to switch it up, you have to do the same thing when it comes to your marketing as a real estate investor. And if you know what you're focused on, great. If you're looking at just, hey, I need to get a list and need a wholesale make some money, great. You just better be building your buyer's list. All right. You better, be buying, you better be creating a seller's list to find something. You better be reaching out and blitzkrieging your, your contacts to find some things that are available to you. And you just have to pick your poison. Pick which way you want to go. Right. Do I want to call banks? Do I want to email? Do I not want to talk? Do I still work full time? What you have to realize, everybody, is if you're going to reach out to people, you have to give it time for them to sit in. You have to give them time to read your email. They may not have something every month. They may not have something every week. But every bank, every hedge fund that we've ever dealt with has had something at some point. And the fact that they sent it to us, first and foremost, was because the fact is we never went away. They kept seeing the green emails. They kept seeing the emails with my face on it. They kept seeing my logo at the he header of an email. They start, they keep seeing me on LinkedIn as I post. They check out our website. They do a lot of things like that, but a lot of it goes into it. It's just have to have realistic expectations that he's going to take some time and a little patience and, and run with that and rinse and repeat. That's what it comes down to. Anybody that's successful out there in the note business will tell you it's all about consistency and dedication, finding a couple, three or four things that you enjoy doing that work well with your schedule, that you can systemize it, where you can almost set it up on autopilot, whether it's posting, emailing, dialing, hiring a VA to jump on LinkedIn, send direct messages, whatever it might be, use it. And there's a variety of different ways. There's so many ways to find deals. You just have to do it and do the work. And like I said, rinse and repeat and eventually your realistic expectations will kick in. You'll see deals like, oh my gosh, this actually does work. But you can't be doing one thing and say, well, this doesn't work. If that's the case. You will never find success in anything because you haven't given itself, yourself enough time to, to be successful. So as we said many times before, success is not an overnight occurrence. You know, as Damon John, when the shark said, hey, overnight success for him was an eight-year experience. For me... 
50 phone calls before I first got my first tape. Another round of calling one bank 70 times before I got into the right department. All right. Literally, literally, it's one of my favorite words now. Put a plan in place, write it down, rinse and repeat, and give it time to work. And you'd be happier. So go out and uh, make something happen. If you've enjoyed this uh, and you're watching this on Facebook Live, feel free to share it. If you're listening to this on iTunes, Stitcher, or any of our 90 plus platforms that we're on, love for you to leave a review, love for you to share it. Love to hear from you, as always, out there. If you are uh, looking for something, feel free to drop me an email at scott at weclosenotes.com, and we're glad to get on the horn and visit with you. See if we can't help you find your way to the top. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.